afternoon, everybody, and uh, a very wet, warm, I mean, wet and warm welcome to uh, the Sonic Lab on this absolutely stinking uh, day outside. But uh, we really appreciate it that you come through rain and wind to, to, to join us here. Um, there must be the temptation, as I'm sure there is for some, hello, to join us on the live stream and stay in the warm at home. So we're delighted if you're joining us on the live stream, and we very much appreciate it, uh, particularly for live jazz, to have you here, some of you here in the hall. Um, this is the last of our events for this uh, autumn term, and so I can wish you a very happy Christmas. And uh, in the new year, our events will start again uh, in, let me get this right, uh, we'll start again in here, uh, 18th of uh, January with Lee Gamble, and uh, then the next one, the 25th, will be uh, violin and piano recital by Matilda Milwitzki and Hugh Watkins in the Hearty Room. So back here on the 18th, and you're always very welcome at 10 past one. Uh, we have fire exit uh, over there, and behind you, the door through which you came. Um, and I'm confident that any kind of damp lingering will be rapidly uh, eradicated by the, the welcome uh, and the, the general kind of uh, pizzazz of our soloist today. It's a huge pleasure to welcome back Steve Barnett and friends. Uh, we have a tradition of this concert, I should say. We, we nearly always have, uh, as this last concert before Christmas, a jazz event. And uh, not for the first time today, I'm delighted to say that we're welcoming back as guest star Gordon Campbell, one of the most distinguished Brit British trombonists, a star of the BBC Big Band and numerous other uh, events. Uh, we've had one or two attempts to get him, which founded with COVID and so on, and it's a real joy to have him back here today. Um, and so please, without more ado, join me in welcoming Steve Barnett and the trio and Gordon Campbell, thank you.
Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me okay? That's good, because I'm really deaf. <laughs> um, welcome, and as, as uh, Piers was saying about the awful weather outside, uh, thank you for coming and braving that. Um, that first tune was called Emily. It's normally a waltz, uh, and it was written by a trombone player called Johnny Mandel. Now, Johnny Mandel, I don't know if you know this name, but Johnny Mandel is one of the greatest songwriters ever, I think. He wrote The Shadow of Your Smile. Um, oh, what was that, that other tune? He, um, the, the theme from MASH, he wrote that. Uh, on YouTube at the moment, there's a, there's a lovely program of him with an American big band, or his big band, in LA. Uh, and I've just been watching it all week. It's absolutely fantastic. Check it out, Johnny Mandel's big band. Uh, so that was Emily. Uh, we're now going to play something that's based on a tune called In a Mellow Tone, but it was uh, Ben Webster wrote this tune and it's called Did You Call Her Today? I think you'll like this. Thank you. 
You enjoy that? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Um, ben Webster was one of my favourite saxophone players, you know, and I heard heard him play that with Harry Sweets Edison, the great trumpet player. And I thought, oh, I'd love to play that. So that was that was. Uh, did you call her today? Uh, the next tune. Uh, <laughs> it's something happened a few weeks ago. There's a there's a great film called The Paris Blues, which Louis Armstrong's in, and Paul Newman, the great actor, plays the trombone. And uh, he plays it really well, actually. He's actually miming to a, a guy called Murray McEachern, who was a Canadian trombone player, who's a wonderful trombone player. And, uh, but his miming skills are very, very good. <laughs> like he knows how to work, use the slide, you know. Um, so my wife came to me and she said, go on, you look at this, it's on YouTube. It's called, um, uh, well, the tune's called Mood Indigo. And she said, look, it's Paul Newman playing the trombone. I said, yeah, that's not Paul Newman, that's Murray McEachern. I said, I can play that tune. She said, you might be able to play that tune, but you'll never be as good looking as him. <laughs> that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> so we're going to play for you uh, Duke Ellington's Mood Indigo.
Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's lovely getting older. Uh, um, yeah, isn't that beautiful? Duke Ellington, oh goodness. Um, do you want another story? I'll tell you the piano story. This is a true story. Um, I had a dear friend called uh, Don Innes, who was a wonderful piano player, wonderful musician, lovely man, beautiful man. Fr came, came from Aberdeen, just inland from Aberdeen. And uh, uh, there's, there's two films about the great train robbery. One's from the, uh, the robber's perspective and one from the police's uh, <laughs> perspective. And um, uh, he got us to do some of the music for it. So when you, when you do uh, film music, you get quite well paid, you know. These big, big American epic films, they get a lot of money, you know. But uh, Don had never done this before. And uh, he, if ever you get a chance to watch these films, you'll hear him play and his music as well. Just background stuff, but it's absolutely fantastic playing. So um, a few weeks after the, they've recorded it, it, it's been done, and, and this check arrived to, these, to the house. He used to live in Ryslip. The check arrived, and uh, it's a lot of money, you know. And he's looking at it, and his dear wife, June, said, Don, what's that from? He said, oh, it's from that film I did, The Great Train Robbery. She said, oh, my goodness, that's a lot of money. What are you going to do with that? And he said, well, I could do with a new piano. So off they go down to, to Harrods, to the piano department, and he's trying the first piano, which is a Steinway, and the young assistant comes bouncing across he says, can I help you, sir? He said, hi, uh, uh, I love this piano. How much is it? Uh, it's 25,000 pounds, sir. Oh, my goodness, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, he goes to the next piano, tries that one. And he said, how much is this one? That's 36,000 pounds, sir. Oh, dear him, you have a lot of money. And he, at that point, his wife said, uh, don't stop mucking about. Just use the money you got from the great train robbery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> They they uh, they got taken to the security room <laughs> and had to explain. Wonderful man, Mr. Don Innes. So um, we're going to play Girl of My Dreams. Yeah, uh, this is a tune I heard one of my great heroes of the trombone, Mr. Carl Fontana, play. And don't know much about it, but it's called Girl of My Dreams.
So, um, we're going to play something now from Oklahoma, the, the wonderful Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, movie. Um, and it's called Sorry with a Fringe on Top. Well, it's got a bit of a difference. Again, my, uh, my great hero on the trombone, Carl Fontana, heard him play this. And I thought, oh, we could do that. Um, so, this Sorry with a Fringe on Top with a difference.
We're going to play a carol for you. Um, Silent Night. Should we do that one? Yeah. Seeing it's Christmas. Would you like that? Yeah. Somebody got a Christmas hat on here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Silent Night. I'd like to thank the guys here um, 
Steve, Rod, Andy, Andrew. Um, we just sort of gathered together for a quick rehearsal and come up with this. Isn't it magic? Music is magic. Uh, Steve, kept, Steve was saying, uh, what, let's sort out an ending. I said, no, the universe will give us the ending. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. I don't think we went wrong, did we? I did, but... <laughs> um, Thank you so much again for coming um, today in the horrible weather. Um, put your hands together for the rhythm section, guys. Thank you. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite trombone players ever was Bob Brookmeyer. I was lucky to work with him. Uh, great composer, great, just great everything, great valve trombone player. And uh, he made an album with Clark Terry and they played this tune. It's a hymn, but it's called the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It could be American. Um, and we're going to play that to f for our finale. Yeah? Okay. The bat Thanks again. We'll see you sometime. I didn't come last year because it was my 70th birthday. <laughs> you didn't? Yeah, Steve said, oh, I've got a gig for you. On 1st of December, I said, Steve, I'm sorry, mate. It's my big birthday. I'm celebrating so uh, it's lovely to be back again but uh, see you sometime thank you
Thank you very much. There'll be a small collection. It's for the church. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.